Hi! Okay, so today we're talking about torticollis and plagiocephaly. So, what is torticollis? Torticollis um, is called wry neck, um, and what that means is there's like a tilt in the neck. So, um, one of the muscles in the neck will be short, um, and so the baby's head will be bent to one side and then turned, kind of like this, um, or the other way. Um, and oftentimes it's associated um, with plagiocephaly. Usually they go hand in hand. And also we're going to be talking about plagiocephaly, which is also known as oblique head. And that's going to happen whenever your baby has a preference that they like to sleep on, whether it's on this side, then this part of their head is going to become flat and it will just have a malformation, um, which could lead to many other issues down the line, whether it is their speech um, or their feeding or even um, just with their gross motor developmental skills. Okay, so all gross motor development starts at head control. Um, and so if we don't have good head control, then we don't gain good trunk control. And if we don't have good trunk control, then we don't have control with our limbs. Um, and that can lead to um, gross motor and fine motor developmental issues. Another issue that you might see with plagiocephaly is that your baby could have any type of facial asymmetry. So a certain part of their face might be a little flattened it as well, whether it be this part right here. And that could um, also affect their jaw alignment, which then is going to lead to them not being able to feed appropriately, um, even having issues with breastfeeding or just being able to um, open their jaw the appropriate amount that it needs to be in order for them to start feeding as well. Okay, so torticollis can also affect um, speech development because um, if you don't have the proper trunk or head control, then that will affect the air that you're able to produce for speech production. It also can affect feeding because if you don't have trunk or head control, then it will affect the way that you're able to process foods um, through your GI system. Also, um, if your head is turned to this way, it might affect breastfeeding as well. Um, and then also torticollis can affect your vision. So if your head is tilted this way, then you might start seeing the world through this point of view. Um, and then it can also affect your fine motor skills because if you don't have trunk control, then you can't use your limbs properly. Conservative treatment is always the go-to. So the earlier you come in, the better you're going to see quicker results um, because we already know the different things that we're going to be looking for whenever the baby arrives, whether it be how uh, much they defer in the head shape or whether it be how much progress they're making in between the time um, that they're here um, and if they need any extra services, which would include a helmet for the babies that have plagiocephaly. Because if they have too much um, of an abnormality, then we would need a helmet to make sure that their head and their skull is forming in the way that it should be. So if the neck tightness remains, when a baby is learning skills like rolling, sitting, or crawling, then we're going to have to work on them. Um, they're going to learn those skills with compensatory movement strategies. And then those compensatory movement strategies is going to lead to hip tightness or um, arm tightness. And then we're not only going to be treating the neck tightness, but the other body parts as well. And just remember, it's always easier to learn a skill the correct way first than to relearn a skill. So, I know this might bring about some questions about how your baby is developing or if you need to come see a PT. Um, and you can always look at our gross motor checklist on our Cutting Edge Pediatric Therapy website. Um, and if you have any questions, you can ask your local physical therapist for help. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. If you are noticing any abnormalities in your baby or anything that's raising a concern, feel free to always reach out, even um, questioning, bringing it up to your pediatrician whenever you have the monthly checkups, just so that you know that you are addressing it and you can get early intervention as soon as possible.